our conversion. We are Jars Engineering. My name is Amanda Coleman. I'm Jonathan Templeton. Ryan Orr. Zach Weisberg. So as just mentioned, we are Jars Engineering, and we are originally instructed seven months ago by our project sponsor that he required a team to design, manufacture, and install a set of mechanical devices that will allow the transaxle of a previously gasoline-driven vehicle to mate properly and efficiently to an electric motor using engineering techniques and experiences learned over the course of each of our respective college careers. This project car originally started off as two separate vehicles, a 91 Ford Ranger and a 69 Volkswagen Beetle. As seen in this picture, it is now one vehicle made of the front cab from the Ranger and the rear transaxle from the Beetle. <clears throat> the transaxle of this vehicle is the integration of the gearbox and differential unified into a single unit with connecting output shafts to each of the wheels in order to drive the vehicle. Upon further inspection of this transaxle, you may or may not notice that the orientation of it is actually rear facing. This needed to be taken into consideration when designing these mechanical devices since not only is this one of the requirements that the car must properly shift through all four forward gears and reverse, but the electric motor needed to be mounted to the car in such a way that it moves coherently with the car from the rear end. This means that the torque applied to the motor from the transmission, and consequently, the vibrations, stresses, and other forces to be applied to this design, to the designed mechanical devices from everyday operation needed to be analyzed to prevent future part failure or fatigue. The tests that were ran and calculations conducted will be discussed and provided more thoroughly later in this presentation. By the end of this project, we have successfully designed, manufactured, and installed the following mechanical devices. A flywheel adapter, clutch assembly, bell housing adapter, motor mount, and the motor itself. This allows the adaptive vehicle to not only operate properly and efficiently off the installed electric motor, but it also negates the use or need for fossil fuels that was previously required when the vehicle operated off the gasoline engine. So as stated, the three parts that we have designed and fabricated include a bell housing adapter, a flywheel adapter, and a motor mount. All these parts were first created in Adventure, where we ran stress analysis tests to try different materials for each part. This allowed us to pick the lightest and most cost-effective material before purchasing it. Our bell housing adapter plate performs two main jobs. It is a housing for the clutch pack as well as the main alignment piece to connect the motor and transmission. The part was constructed out of 6061 aluminum to help save weight as well as protect against corrosion. Since our motor and transmission were not originally designed to be made together, the bolt holes for the two were misaligned. The bell housing adapter we created is designed to uniform our motor and transmission. It started out as a 12 inch round stock of aluminum and from there it was machined by Turbonetics to our design specs. The thickness of this adapter is crucial because it will determine how far the flywheel is from the clutch. If it is too, cl too close, clutch will never engage, but if it is too thin, the clutch will never disengage, causing a safety hazard. A flywheel, is uh, a flywheel is connected to the motor's crankshaft and generally performs three main functions. It serves as a starting location for the motor, stores kinetic energy, and also is the main uh, connection point for the pressure plate. Since our motor is electric, we do not need a starter and we have linear power bands, so energy storage is not needed. Our flywheel will mainly be used for holding the pressure port. The adapter we have designed is used to attach the flywheel to the motor output shaft. It will transfer the torque from the motor to the flywheel via keyed slot. The flywheel will then transfer the torque from the motor to the transmission by using friction produced by the clutch. The adapter has been constructed on campus using the engineering machine shop. Our electric motor could not be mounted like a traditional motor in the sense that it cannot be mounted directly to the frame. This is due to the fact that the motor will be directly connected to the transaxle and the transaxle will be moving with the suspension components. This creates the problem of not having a solid surface to mount the electric motor to. What we have done to overcome this issue is design the motor that can be connected directly to the suspension components so the motor, transaxle, and suspension move as a unit. The motor mount will be constructed out of two by two by quarter inch angle iron configured in a ladder formation. 
Our first part installed was a flywheel adapter. This part attached directly to the motor and allowed the flywheel from our purchased clutch assembly to mate properly with the motor's bolt pattern. The clutch assembly and flywheel were purchased and bolted directly to the flywheel adapter. We had no issues with these parts because they were made specifically for the Volkswagen transaxle that we used. After the clutch assembly was installed, we bolted the bell housing adapter, which allowed us to attach our assembly to the transaxle. Once all the above parts were assembled, we installed our motor mount. The motor mount was placed under the motor, flywheel, clutch, and bell housing to support the parts while the vehicle was is in operation. Once up the motor mount was installed, we bolted the motor securely onto the motor mount to prevent any unwanted movement. So the real reason why we are doing this is to negate the use of fossil fuels. The electric motor also adds a power and torque increase. The torque increase from the original to the now electric motor is from 39 foot-pounds of torque to 188 foot-pounds of torque. The horsepower increase is 50 horsepower to 175 horsepower. The electric motor provides approximately five times more torque. This would alter our clutch choice. We had to find a specialized clutch for our transaxle. This is a graph from for the 1969 Volkswagen original motor. And as you can see, the max torque is at 3,000 RPMs, which is not even in daily driving use. With the new electric motor, all aspects of it have increased, and the max torque is from 0 to 5,000 RPMs, which will be from the entire system. Our calculations to prove this is we have a shear stress on the key itself. The key shear force is 10.29 kilonewtons, and the shear stress on the key is 33.76 megapascals. This was used to determine the material we needed for the key and for the size of our flywheel adapter. On the shaft, the stresses on the shaft itself has a maximum shear stress of 1,319 psi, with an angle of twist that is very negligible. The power requirement is 182 horsepower, and a polar moment of inertia is 1.909. The moment and the tensile strength calculations go hand in hand. We have a 25 inch motor mount that we have to support a 150 pound motor. Doing the calculations, we have found a maximum moment of a 1,875 pounds an inch, which now will go into the tensile of our bolts itself. Their tensile stress has found it was 764 PSI, meaning we need a minimum tensile bolt rating of 33,900 pounds. The pressure found on the forces was 1,528 PSI. The bolts that we have used are an SAE J429 grade eight bolt, which are well within the requirements. The reason why we have gone with a grade eight bolt compared to a grade five in the fine thread is that the cost versus the strength was very minimal. Throughout the entire project, tests were conducted to ensure our parts were properly designed. We have tested our flywheel and bell housing adapter designs using the stress analysis simulation and inventor. The analysis determined if the design of the adapters would withstand the forces applied during the operation of the vehicle. This allowed us to make corrections to the part designs before the parts were actually manufactured. We also tested our motor mount design and inventor. Our motor mount plays a crucial role in supporting the motor and the assembly in which it is connected to the transaxle. The stress analysis outlined points of weakness in our design and the weak points were determined and we were correct, made changes to strengthen the motor mount. Our motor mount was made of angle iron and welded together onto the transaxle, forming a platform to support the motor. To ensure our welds were welded correctly, a liquid penetrant test was performed. A liquid penetrant test is used to inspect material surface for flaws, which include crack, cracks, porosity, laps, seams, and lag fusion. Liquid penetrant testing indicates a flawed area on a material and allows a, 
a lot of the areas with discrepancies to be found where the human eye may not have located it. Any area of our motor model that failed the liquid penetrant test was rewelded. Once all the parts were assembled and the previous test completed, we moved to static and dynamic testing using strain gauges. We performed static testing of our assembly first to determine if our assembly was structurally sound. But due to the entire vehicle being in mobile upon completion of the bell housing adapter, flywheel adapter, and the motor mount, dynamic testing was not possible using strain gauges. So we went ahead and cited the sources that we used throughout this presentation. And do we have any questions?